Hi everyone, I'm Ben and you're watching The Snecker Show. In a previous episode, in fact several previous episodes now, I conducted some power testing with this thickness planer which is upgraded with a Shelix helical cutter head. The short recap is that the planer drew a lot more power than a lot of people expected, this guy included, and it resulted in a lot of questions and comments doubting the accuracy of the results. Well, I'm not going to go over everything again because it's been covered at great length in other videos and in the comments of those videos, but the short version is that uh, everybody who has repeated the same test using the same planer, the same type of meter, the same width and density of wood has come up with pretty much the same results. So, yes, this planer draws a lot of power. But what really caught a lot of people's attention was that it didn't trip the circuit breaker in the wall, even though it was well over the rated amperage for the, for the outlet and the breaker that I was on. I did trip the breaker in the planer at one point, and that's really what we're going to focus on today, because I didn't get to do a follow-up to that immediately. Uh, several months ago, I picked up a couple of extra replacement breakers, and they've been sitting on my workbench taking up space for all that time, which is really uncommon. So uh, I wanted to take out this breaker today and not just replace it and show you how to replace it in your planer if you have to, but... I want to dissect this thing. I want to take out the old uh, breaker, put in the new one, and then take the old one apart, take a look at what's inside, maybe even run some current through it, and try to have some fun. And it's always kind of cool figuring out how things work. So uh, hopefully this is a little bit more exciting than watching grass grow, but uh, I think it's going to be pretty cool. So uh, let's get started and, uh, and take a look at how this thing works. I have this thing here just to talk about the similarities between some parts. I'm pretty sure that these are thermal breakers, which means that when they get heated up to a certain point, there's a, a piece of metal in there. It's a bimetal strip that's got steel on one side and something else like copper on the other side. And as it gets heated, the different expansion rates of those two metals will cause it to bend, and that's what disconnects the circuit. Now, I just learned about these bimetal strips like a year ago because I bought this space heater with the intent of uh, playing around with some ideas for a, for a wood drying kiln. Well, the heater heated up fine, but then it kept turning off when it got hot inside the box. And um, it's, it does that on purpose because that way if you kick a blanket on top of it in the middle of the night, it's not going to keep heating and burn your house down. But my intended use was different, so I needed to figure out how to bypass that switch. I figured I'd just open it up, look for wherever that uh, part of the circuitry was, snip the wires, and just connect them directly so that it wouldn't go through the bypass. Um, well, let's take a look inside here, and I'll show you what I came up with. I already got all the screws out to make this easier, but take that open, and then take off the fan cover, and then take off the heating element, and then up here you got this thing. And this was the closest part that I could find that I thought might be the disconnect, because there's something right here that separates. It looked like a switch. And that is the bimetal strip that I was talking about. And we can take a little bit of a better look at how that works now. Well, this is what it looks like on the inside. There is a, a copper piece on the top and a brass piece on the bottom there. And then on the inside, in between those two, there's a piece of metal in there that's kind of hard to see, but it's steel, and I think it's the bimetal strip. It, it's definitely steel, and there might be something else on the bottom, but it's really just too small for me to see it. The way that I know that it's steel is if I put a magnet on there, see it move, and pull it back down to the bottom so it's easier to watch this work. Now, I'm going to put a heat gun on this, and what's going to happen is that, uh, that piece of steel in the middle with, I think, uh, maybe some brass or something on the bottom side of it laminated on, is going to curve upwards and push this piece of copper up and break that circuit. I'm going to use a heat gun for this. It shouldn't take long for it to heat up, and it will take even less time for it to cool down, because it's about 40 degrees in my workshop right now, so everything is cooling down pretty quickly.
If you do a lot of heavy planing, at some point you're probably going to trip this breaker in the front of the planer. And the more frequently you trip it, the more frequently it will trip. It just gets worn out over time. At that point, the easiest thing to do is just to swap it out with a new breaker. This is not hard at all. This is a really easy fix. All you got to do is take out a bunch of screws from the front and remove this top cover. It's just not entirely intuitive, so we're going to go through it step by step. And the first thing you want to do is make sure that your planer is unplugged. Even though the breaker is on the other side of the switch, so as long as the switch is off, the breaker is not going to get any juice. There are still other wires in there, and you don't want to take that risk. So unplug the planer, and then you're ready to go. The only tools you're going to need for this are the wrench that comes in the planer. That's just going to be for taking off the top uh, panel. And then you need a number two Phillips screwdriver, a three millimeter and a four millimeter hex wrench, a 14 millimeter wrench, or you can just use some pliers. That's just for taking the nut off of the, the breaker right there. And of course, your replacement breaker. And I will make one recommendation up front. This looks exactly like the breaker that's inside there and there are only two connections. So when you pull out these connections, you're going to be holding two identical looking breakers. So do yourself a favor and mark it with the month and year, and that way you know if you get confused or somebody comes in and interrupts you in the middle, you can be sure which one that you're supposed to put into the machine. First, you need to remove the top cover because there are three screws underneath here that you can't access until the cover is removed. And then grab your number two Phillips, and you got one, two, and three. There's a handy tray right here so you don't lose your stuff. As long as you have that number two Phillips handy, you can take off your material removal gauge plate. Mine only has one screw because I had to modify this for an undersized cutter head. Yours will have three. And then you remove the annoying other screw that's hidden behind it. Next, grab your 3mm hex wrench and take out these two screws in the front corners. And then switch to your 4mm and you can take off your speed adjustment lever. And then you use your 14 millimeter wrench to loosen up that nut right there. Shouldn't take much, and then you can just spin that off. And don't lose that little plate off of there. It doesn't always come off really easily. There you go. Yours might come with a replacement plate, mine did not. Well, one of them did and it was bent and one came without a plate, so I'm going to save this one. And that's it. You have now accessed your breaker. Now, before you put this in, notice that it's got a line side and a load side. Line coming from the, the power source, like your circuit panel or the electrical outlet, and the load side is going further into the planer. Easy way to not get confused, as long as you have properly marked your replacement one so that you don't get mixed up. Pull off one side and then stick it in the same place. And then pull off the other side and put that over here. That way it's a one for one match and you don't get confused. Take off this nut. And just slide that right back through. Put the 
plate back on and replace the nut. You don't need to crank this down a lot, just make sure that it's on there. And now you can start to put everything back together. When you start to put your faceplate back on, you'll notice that the red lever for the material removal gauge is going to be behind the plastic. You just have to reach underneath and find the bar that, uh, that moves it and pick that up so it gets into the right place. That's it, you're back in business. Now let's take this guy apart. Before I crack this thing open and destroy the label, I just wanted to point out, for those who are wondering why the breaker in the planer tripped and the one on the wall didn't, that's an 18 amp breaker that they have in the planer. The one on the wall is 20 amps. So 15 amp planer, 18 amp breaker, 20 amp breaker in the wall. They knew what they were doing. Uh, I think that, let's see, I got one, two, three rivets there and five on the bottom. So I think that these two right here are probably holding something internally and I just need to remove these three. I hope that's an accurate guess because I don't want this thing flying apart after I cut it. Worst case I have one more but I would like to get it right on the first one. far so good. Let's see if I can push those rivets out now. There we go. That's coming. One to go. I can feel everything's loosened up already, so hopefully this doesn't just blow apart when I get this get this last one out. Gone. Guess if that's held on there. Oh man, I'm gonna guess this is the top. I already sliced that piece on the side, so let's see what we got. What about that? That's interesting. What do we got here? Yes, yeah, so these okay, that's that's what was the rivets were for on the other side, just holding those. Uh, holding those plugs. What's going on here? Right, how does this work? Well, this thing right here, I'm going to guess is our bimetal strip. 
And when it pushes down, ah, that one causes it to pop out. Hard to see. I can't tell yet. Nothing on this side. Okay, well, I'm going to play around with this a uh, little bit and then try to figure out what's going on and come back in a minute. Okay, I got it. This is definitely a bimetal strip. It's kind of cool. Um, this is the bimetal strip. This is the, the line side. That means this is the power coming in from the, the uh, switch or the plug. And this is the power going out to the breaker. And I was, I was pushing this down, trying to see if that was going to uh, be activated. But it's actually that this side will curve up. So when this gets hot, it's going to flex up this way. And that picks up right here. Uh, let me find something smaller. Hang on. It's going to flex up right here and allow that to slide forward. And then when it cools down enough, this is going to try to close up and you'll be able to push that back in to reset your breaker. And I'm going to see if I can zoom in for a little bit better view and do that again, just because I know this is, might be a little tough to see. All right, so this is the, the line coming in from the outlet or the breaker. It goes through this brass piece across there and out the other side to the, the, uh, the planar motor. And you can kind of see on this uh, on this bimetal strip here, it says flex on there. It has it written in, in uh, gray text. So uh, as this heats up, this will start to curve up. And then when this guy gets picked up right here, I'll hold the middle so it doesn't pop out. There's a spring at the bottom right there. And as this gets picked up, it allows this bar, this plastic bar that's attached to the plunger, to move forwards. And then once that plastic bar comes forward, it becomes an insulator between these two metal parts and prevents the, the electrical current from passing through here. So uh, you can't reset the breaker until this cools down enough that it starts to push downward pressure this way. And once that happens, all you do is push in the plunger, and there you go, your breaker is reset. Now one thing I want to point out is that uh, back to this number 18. All right, take a look inside here. And you'll see that there is nothing inside of here that understands what the number 18 is, or even what a number is. There's, there's no electronic parts, there, there are no computer circuits. This is just a piece of metal. So uh, it doesn't react based on a number, it reacts based on how it feels. And how it feels is determined by the temperature. And temperature is caused by the passage of electromagnetic current, because that generates heat. So 18 is a guideline. It's kind of like the speed limit sign on the road. It doesn't mean that you can't drive faster than that. It just means that if you drive faster than that for long enough, you might run into some consequences. And the farther you go over the limit, the faster those consequences are likely to be encountered. So 18 amps, you can drive, uh, or you can run this thing with 18 amps from going through it, but this is going to heat up over time. And if you're working out in the sun, or if you're working in a hot workshop, this is probably going to trip a lot faster. If you run 30 amps through this, it's going to heat up even faster and, and then you'll get a trip. I mean, you saw in the other video, maybe if you, if you watched it, uh, I ran, I was running about 30 amps for maybe uh, five minutes or so on and off before this thing tripped. And, you know, as it happens enough, I guess this will just become a little bit more flexible and easy to make it trip. So, uh, once again, there are no electronic parts, no computer circuits that would understand what a number is. This is purely responding to heat. Well, I said I was going to do it, so I guess I got to do it. This is the power coming in from the electrical outlet. And uh, that is a 12 gauge, 15 foot extension cord. For anyone who has questions about the voltage, I've done testing on that before, and there's a minor drop, uh, but nothing too major. And that goes in the, uh, the hot wire, goes to the, uh, I have that thing reversed. Son of a biscuit. So as I was saying, the electricity is coming in here from the wall outlet, going into the line side, passing through uh, through the uh, bimetal strip, coming out on the load side, and that continues to the planer, which already has another breaker in there, so nuts. I wonder which one of these is going to trip first. I seriously just thought of that after I got this thing all set up, but <laughs> I'm going to uh, go on a limb and bet 
that the breaker, the older breaker is going to trip first. All right, take three. I decided to just remove the other breaker from the planer and I bypassed it using some copper wire. So there's nothing in the planer that's going to shut this off. All, all that's going to happen right here. So once again, hot coming in and I just, uh, I hot glued a toothpick on here just so the, uh, the plunger doesn't just pop off of there. And um, current goes through here out to the planer. I'll turn on the meter for the amp reading and it's not running yet. And I have a, uh, I'm not going to bother with uh, setting the max on this one. You'll just get to see what the actual reading is as it goes through. And I, uh, I went out to the shed and found a nice, uh, nice nine and a quarter inch wide piece of oak again. So I'm going to run that through the planer. I'm guessing two or three passes. Um, it is kind of a cold shop right now, but maybe two or three passes. I'll run it on speed two and that way it'll, It'll probably bump this up close to 40, wouldn't surprise me. And uh, we'll see how quickly we can get that guy to pop. Well, that wasn't quite as hard as I thought. Now, the, uh, what happened was that the board was coming out of the far end of the planer. I'm sorry I didn't have two cameras going, but I figured this part was the more important. Um, the board was coming out of the far end of the planer, and as the weight of the board... That just clicked back in. As the weight of the board was dropping down, uh, it was picking up the, uh, the tail end of the board into the snipe area, and uh, that was causing a little higher draw. So this probably bumped up a little bit right at the end, but... Uh, anyway, let's do it again, and I'm going to reset this guy carefully because this is still this is still live. Uh, probably should have turned off the planer first. Uh, that scared the crap out of me. Uh, so now we can do it again, and I'll let this cool down so we can watch it all in a little bit slower motion. turned off and unplugged. And there we go, ready to be reset. I don't know about you, but I thought that was a lot of fun. But I am looking forward to moving on to some other videos and not doing any more power testing planer videos whatsoever. Uh, I think I might do a jig video next. I've been promising for several years to do an update to my version 1 of my uh, doweling jig. This is version 2, and I have a whole bunch of dowels right here that I made with version 3. So maybe I'll get on to that next. Anyway, I hope you had as much fun as I did, and thanks for watching.